Hi everyone, welcome to the Wargaming Power. I am David, and today I'm joined by Sophie from Bird Nerd Sophie. Hi guys. We're going to be talking about building a new cage today. It's very exciting. Um, who we got it from, why we got it, and the sort of pros and cons of the cage. So as you, all of you who watch this channel are probably aware, we have three rescue conyers, and they have sort of medium sized cages. Um, we wanted to keep them in sort of the similar sort of cage size to what they had, but we felt that they needed an upgrade, and so this is the reason we decided that we would upgrade one of their cages. So we're very excited to be working with Northern Parrots on this video. They've very kindly gifted us the cage for the bird in question. We're going to tell you about the cages that we've been thinking about and why we went for this particular cage. So as I mentioned before, we decided that the Conyers needed the cage upgrade. We actually cleared this space behind us initially for three very large cages. However, we realised that we have our television right next to this wall, and so we don't want a cage right next to that and them being disrupted in their sleep. So we had to change our plans a little bit, and then our plans changed even more as things went on. So for this first cage upgrade, our initial plan was to put Scampy in it because he's the most active, he's the most naughty, and we felt that he would be best suited to be upgraded first. However, things have changed since then. As you may have seen, I'll leave a card for my Scampy and Pickles in Love video. Very interesting. Um, as I just said, it implies that Scampy and Pickles are getting on much better. So we felt now that Olive would be the best choice to have the cage upgrade. She's also very active as well, as you can see in this video. She loves moving around. She's excited about her new cage. So we thought that maybe that Scampy and Pickles may be able to share a cage. So we thought it would work a bit longer on bonding them and give Olive the initial cage upgrade so she can enjoy it because if she's not in the, the if she's like not in the lover's circle, she may as well have the bigger house. <laughs> So there are lots of different brands of cages in the UK, but the two that we really love are Rainforest and Liberta. There's loads of different shapes and sizes, different components to them. So we decided to look at those brands first to see if we could find one that we thought that Olive would really like. So there's lots of things to consider when you're getting a cage. There's the size, there's the general features, the, how well built it is. The good thing about generally Liberta and Rainforest, they're generally very well built, which we quite like about them. But in the end, we opted for the Bolivia 2 Playtop cage because it's, it looked very sturdy. The sizing was pretty well proportioned for a single bird. You could probably get two in there, but we think it's best for an individual bird. The other reasons we opted for this cage is the fact it has nice wheels on the bottom so you can wheel it around because it is quite heavy because it is so well built and also because it has that play top and we felt that a nice play top stand would be beneficial to our birds because not only Olive can use, that can use it but the other birds can fly to it and enjoy it as well and because it's so high up it's just going to be a nice safe spot they can hang out on and enjoy and it may cause, a little, cause them to fight a little bit less over our other play stand so they can just uh, have different places to go to especially if we end up getting multiples of them them because then they'll have lots of different play stands with their own. So one thing to consider as well if you have small birds like us, if you want to get them a really big cage, sometimes the bar spacing is quite big and they can actually get their heads through. So we made sure that the cage that we chose had the appropriate bar spacing which is about 1.5 centimetres which is right at the top end scale for collies but it's still perfectly safe for them so they can't get through but it's still a really great cage. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, Northern Parrots kindly gives us this cage. We're very grateful to them. We have been working with Northern Parrots via Instagram for quite some time and we really do actually like them as a company. It's not just a sales thing. We genuinely like buying from them and think they're great. The reason we do shop from them, mostly because they have regular offers, which we like, you know, different sorts of sales and there's low postage threshold offers, but not just that, it's a variety of stuff. There's so much parrot stuff you can get from them. Um, we first encountered them a long, long time ago, bought a few things, and then we keep going back because there's just so many goodies you can get for your parrots it's on there. A lot of money. But... Yeah, a lot of money on there as well. <laughs> but one of the other awesome things with Northern Parrots is they have the most incredible customer service, and for us especially, we find that really important. You know, we've shopped at other places before, and you can really tell the difference. You know, Northern Parrots really go the extra mile for you as a customer, and I think that's just so important with businesses these days. And one of the other cool things as well is they have a Facebook group called Purely Parrots. I'm actually a moderator there and it'll be really cool if you came over because there's exclusive offers on there, there's loads of fun and games, um, we do lots of sort of tips and tricks on there for parrot care so if you'd like to come and join us that'd be cool as well. Mm. And they're, they're present on all sorts of social media platforms, they have a YouTube, they have an Instagram which they interact with people on a lot and also the other thing is as Sophie mentioned customer service, 
a lot of other companies aren't quite as responsive. So if there's a problem with your order, for example, something missing, or if there's like a minor problem with a toy, they will just go the extra mile to help you with that. And I think that's so important when you're dealing with anything to do with your pet, your pets or parrots because you want to solve problems quickly and efficiently. So now we've talked extensively about why we picked the cage, who we got it from, we're gonna get on with building it. So I'm gonna show you building it, then we're gonna talk a little bit about it and the benefits, the pros and cons about it. So the first thing you wanna do when you get a new cage, and after you've unboxed it, is just inspect everything's okay and that everything is as it should be. I'm just panning the camera around. You can see all the different components. I've separated them out. I've put all the, like, the screws in separate boxes, got instructions out, had a good look, and made sure that all the components are fine and that there's nothing wrong with it. So once you've done this, you can just get on with building the darn thing. After a lot of jiggling, poking, um, some very happy moments, some very stressful moments, the cage is now built and it's all done. It also comes with these little seed catchers. Um, we don't really want to use them, so we're just going to leave them. Also comes with a few spare bits, lots of spare um, sort of screws and stuff, which is useful and helpful if you lose anything. A nice little certificate of authenticity, also cute. And the bowls that go in these little seed, seed um, and the bowls that go in these little sort of feeding hatches with a, a clasp. We're not sure we're going to use them yet, so we're just leaving them out for now. So, here's the cage now. We've built it. There was some aminaring, but mostly it was fairly easy as a process. So, ease of build-wise, this cage fundamentally is not that difficult to build. It's quite heavy, so if you can have two people, it's well worth it, so they can help each other out. One sort of minor um, niggle with building it, I felt the instructions weren't clear enough. If the instructions were clearer and the parts had labels, for example, little stickers on them, it would have made it so much easier. And we spent a bit of time sort of going, oh, does this go here, does this go there? Without that, this would have been an absolute breeze to build. But now it's built, generally we're very happy with it. It's exactly what we wanted and we think it's very cool. So the first pro with this cage is obviously the amazing play top. You've got two different perches, you've got ladders, two bowls as well, so you can have um, some snacks up there and some water too. And it's just a great way of having your bird out for longer because they can have some independent play up here. You can add some toys, some substrate to the tray, and they can have a really interactive time up here without having to be really actively involved with you. So they can be a really confident and independent bird. 
Otherwise, pros-wise, is obviously the sturdiness of build. I like the way the lock and latch is quite easy to open and shut, but also feels like it's very secure. Um, so if you already talked about bar spacing, it comes with these sort of like, um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'll take you around it in a moment and we'll sort of show these bits. You've got a lovely sturdy lock, you've got this lovely sturdy build. As Sophie mentioned, you've got a lovely play top, which you have a substrate thing. The other thing you can do is you can remove this tray and let more light in if you prefer that and just have it as an open play top. You have a removable tray at the bottom. You know, it's just the sort of general features you'd get with a cage. So I thought I'd take the camera off the mount and show you a sort of um, close up the cage. Sophie talked about the play top stand. These ladders you can put in different positions. So if you want them both at the bottom, you can do that or both at the top, it's up to you. We'll come down a little bit. There's a nice little gap there, which I think is a nice feature between the actual base and there to let some light in. And then you go inside. It comes with one wooden dowel. We'll probably remove and replace. And it comes with these sort of like, um, I don't know what you'd call them, Sophie, like easy open and close food hatches. Yeah, she'll demonstrate. Work. You just lift them up and pull them out and then you can use bowls. I don't know if we'll use the bowls that come with these because they're quite big, but we could convert them into like a foraging bowl or something. But it's still a cool feature, especially if you have a nervous bird who doesn't like hands going in the cage, you can just get the bowls out really easily. Yeah, it's a very sort of nice feature of the cage. We quite like that. Um, and then you go to the bottom, this is more of a con for the cage. I don't think it's actually a pro. I don't really like this base. Obviously for us, it's not really an issue because we always remove the base grating and just replace it with substrate base. We'll probably have to prop it up a little bit or make some minor modifications, but this is something we do with every cage. It's not necessarily a con unique to this cage. Every cage is like this. But um, yeah, generally it's all very good. So we'll keep going down a little bit so you can have it. You've got a slide out tray with a nice handle, always useful because some don't always come with handles and you've got a bottom. What we actually plan to do is what we did with our um, Liberta Oregon flight cage is actually take this little tray out. I'm not going to demonstrate here because I can't get my finger in at the moment. And then we're going to put it down here, tie it with cable ties and use it as a shelf because this adds extra storage to the cage and gives it a bit more utility and also tidies up the mass of toys we have with this cage and every cage. So as I said, there's not many cons with this, lots of pros. Pro-wise, play top stand, excellent size, mobile, and these lovely sort of feeding bowls, which we may not use, may do, but they'll be foraging. Con-wise, slightly tough to build due to instructions, and just the base would prefer, if it was to be a sort of base, that would be thin bars. But again, for us, it's not really an issue. So overall, we are extremely happy with this cage. We're very thankful for Northern Parrot for gifting it to us. If they hadn't, we probably would have bought it anyway because we really, really like it. And we probably intend to get at least one or two more, dependent on how Pickles and Scampi bond, because otherwise we may need a much bigger cage for both of them. If you'd like to find out a little bit more about how we're setting up the cage and what we're put, putting in it, head over to Sophie's channel. So I'm going to be doing a full Konya cage setup and showing you all the different toys and perches, things that we're going to be popping in the cage. Pickles is here because she won't stop screaming, uh, but it's going to be um, really interesting to see how we're going to set it up and how you can set up your own cage for your Konya. So definitely head over to my channel, but make sure you're subscribed to David and me as well. So when you get, um, you're transferring a bird from one cage to another, it's important to give them a bit of time and let them get used to it. So we've had this cage built for a little while and we've let all the birds interact and see it, so it makes them less nervous. Well, we're actually going to see how Olive interacts with it now, so you can see what her first impressions of it are. this video useful thanks again to northern parrot for this cage it is awesome and if you want to learn more then please head over to Sophie's channel and subscribe there in the meantime thanks very much for watching take care and have a great day